Welcome back, my friends, to the Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends over at Joanne.com. We are working on week number one to start your stitch along this fall. This is going to be how we're going to get started in order to continue our progress as we work on this together. But let's talk about a few things first. So as stated in our introduction video, we have all the color breakdowns in order for you to work it. The patterns that we have for you match those color breakdowns in order for you to follow along. But of course you can use your own color creativity in order to make it work. You're going to need an eight millimeter size L crochet hook, but gauge matters. So in order to start today's tutorial and today's project and to get you started for the next six weeks, we're gonna have to do a gauge test first to make sure our gauge matches so that everything will work out in the end. So let's begin week number one. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to do a gauge swatch and I know some of you are <laughs> as excited about it as I am to make a gauge. Now the gauge swatch that we need to do is in order to test your crochet to make sure that it's going to be able to match. Now because we're going in a rotation like this for this particular clue is that we need to watch our gauge just for this particular uh, process so that we get the right size crochet hook the very first time. Now Julia the designer was telling me that because she's known me for quite some time she suggested that the hook size for me is not eight millimeter size L crochet hook like it states but that I would probably be a 10 millimeter size N as a Nancy crochet hook. So she's known me over time and certainly enough uh, she was right I did a gauge and my gauge actually dictates that I should be a 10 millimeter size N crochet hook. So what we're going to do first is that we're going to get ourselves started with a gauge to test us. You don't need to waste any yarn. You just need to test it first and then we're going to begin from that process then to work our way through week number one of the instructions. So the first thing that we need to do is start a gauge. So the gauge is representing four inches in this particular case. It's a four inch square. So you'll see that it's got four inches like this way and it's just a little bit over four in the vertical. What you need to pay attention is is the distance of the width to make sure that it is four. So in order for me to do an eight millimeter size L my particular square would have been smaller. So I had to increase my hook in order to get this gauge to work. So you don't need to waste any yarn even though I cut the yarn you can just test your gauge and then frog it back out and then begin your project. So let's start with the gauge swatch first and then we'll continue. So let's begin to start a gauge. So we're just going to create a slip knot to begin and because I already know that I'm a 10 millimeter size N crochet hook you can try with the L a eight millimeter a size crochet hook that it states in the pattern and see where you go from there. If you know that you are a tight crocheter, I'm tight when it comes to Bernat blanket but other stuff I'm loose then you can probably just guess the size of hook that you would like to try first. So if you get it wrong you'll just have to retest your swatch. So it says seven single crochets in eight rows. So it's seven single crochets in order to do a swatch I need to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Now second chain from the hook you're going to work back across your chain. So there's one and two and just turn it to get the back hump only and I want you to single crochet across your chain. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go back and forth how many rows? Well the gauge says that it was eight rows. So what I want you to do is go back and forth uh, a total of eight rows and then get your measuring tape to measure. Now for those that would like to jump the gun what I have found with myself is that once I did two rows I got my measuring tape and I just did a quick look and then I just made a judgment call whether I was gonna stick with it or not but uh, I'd recommend that you just um, try to do it all the way to the gauge and you're gonna frog it out anyway. So turning your work chain one and then just single crochet across. So this would be row number two. I'm not gonna take you through all eight rows because it's the same thing. So I'm just gonna lay this down uh, in just after row number two and let's just see what our measuring tape says and then it kinda gives you an indication of where you are gonna go with this particular one. So if you're new to the Bernat Blanket your, your um, um, comfort level may be a little bit uh, compromised but it just takes a matter of time. So I've already worked on my homework so I'm very comfortable with this yarn just generally. So let's grab our measuring tape and let's uh, do a test. So I have my measuring tape. I have not measured uh, before this camera was turned on so I'm just going to keep it real. So there is my four. Okay, do you see that there? So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, so there's my four inches. So what I'm doing is that my 10 millimeter size end crochet hook is the right size for me. If I would have used an eight, I would have probably been around the three to three and a half mark and then therefore it'd be too short. So what I want you to do is that I want you to determine what your gauge is. So if you are getting, for example, say you're getting a three or three and a half, you need to increase your hook size and if you were getting like a five, or even a four and a half you need to decrease your hook size. So just uh, take a look. We also have videos on the crochet crowd uh, for a gauge swatch testing and you can uh, see that if this is uh, confusing to you in any way. So once we understand our gauge we're then ready to continue then on with the instructions. So this is clue number one. This is week number one. This is the start to finish of it. We're gonna go through each one of the steps. We're gonna use all four colors within this. You will notice that this color here that you choose if you decided to change any colors will be the dominant color of your blanket which is the, the color contrast D. Okay, so whatever you've chosen for this is going to be the main color. So let's just turn it over so you can see that it looks good on both sides and you're going to notice that when you go to do this is that you're constantly changing where the corner is. So when you get to start it looks like this is gonna be your corners out like this but then you do the next one and then it switches out and then you do the next one again and it switches out and then you come back and do it. So it's all a matter of just begin getting the positioning and it looks really quite amazing. So on page number two there's a diagram. Let's take you there now and let's start the deciphering that. So on page number two and all of the particular stitch along we'll have diagrams for everything that we're going to be doing throughout the stitch along. We're going to be starting off in the center and you read this in a counterclockwise positioning when you go to do this if you've never done this before. So we're going to start off with the round ring and then we're gonna chain five and then start rotating around using one color and then we're gonna fasten off. I would highly recommend that whenever you're fastening off anything get that darning needle out and get it out of your way and completely done so that you don't end up with a lot of tails when you have to think about it. So we have to make three of these as we're going uh, in this clue number one. This is not a granny square afghan so if you're thinking you're getting quite scared don't be it's not and we're gonna be using this as a foundation and at the very end we need to place a stitch marker right at the top and you may have noticed that in the sample that I've already shown you. So for myself I've already done two of, of these and now the third one I'm gonna do with you on camera. You will notice that I did highlight uh, in round number four there is a half double crochet that you see there. I highlighted those because I almost missed that when I was doing my testing sample in order to get that to go. So let's uh, move on now to go and do the first part and start round number one using our first color of the vintage white. So let's begin and start. We're going to start off with a slip knot and you need to do three of these. So this will be the first one of three if you're working on it with me and then you'll do the other two when you have more time and get that homework done before you get into week number two. So I want you to chain four. So one, two, three and four and I want you to insert the hook into the very first chain and yarning over and pulling it through and through to form the first ring of your uh, square. I want you to put the straggler so it's like part of the ring so that you can trap it into position. Let's officially move on to round number one. We're going to chain five which counts as a double crochet and chain two. So let's do that. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet. Four and five is a chain two so it's, it'd be like le leaning over like that. And I want you then to put three double crochets into the center of the ring. So go right up over top of that straggler get or the loose end. Get it into position and out of the way so that it gets stuck underneath. I'm gonna retry that one more time. So just wrapping and going in and double crochet three times. One, two, and three. Then on the corners and all the corners are the same in this particular clue is that you're going to chain two and then come back in and you're going to do another three double crochets. So the chain two in the corners is the consistent one through all the layers here on clue number one. Then you're going to chain two again to turn another corner and coming back into the center of the ring again. Three more double crochets. And then finally chain two again. One and two. So this double crochet is the st is part of this next group which is the final one and so you're only gonna put two double crochets in this time. One and two and I want you to slip stitch it to join it 
to this chain and I want you to go to the third one up. So one, two and three. So the third one up and that's it. If I were you and you were me what I would do is do all the center whites now. So do the other two and then come back then and do round number two with me. So to finish off what I'm only gonna show you to you one time is that just cut an extra long strand just enough to use a darning needle and a darning needle is the absolute best. So just wrap the hook and just pull it through to lock it and turn it around to the back side. I want you to put that onto a darning needle. Now a lot of people don't necessarily like darning needles but this is the absolute best way to get it. You'll never have a problem. So just gliding it through the back side into some stitch work because it's thicker yarn than normal you really do wanna use um, a tapestry needle to pull it through. So go through one time and when you pull it through don't warp the project at all. So that was one time go back in the other direction for a second time and then finally just lining it up and then finally a third time. So one, two and three. You're gonna do that every time you're fastening off with this when you get rid of colors and stuff. So once you get that done you, set, you can safely trim it right to the project and because you were going up over top of the starting strand you're gonna have that. You can cut that out as well. So what I would recommend is do the other two ones uh, like this. This is round number one and then join me and we'll start round number two together. But in the meantime let's start round number two. So let's begin round number two. We're just gonna create a slip knot to begin and we're using dark gray and this particular color of this afghan is so gorgeous it's not even funny. It's probably one of the best I've seen. So we want to look for the middle one of a grouping of three. So the middle double crochet to begin to start and you're just gonna insert into the middle one. So middle stitch and I want you to wrap the yarn and pull through just to fasten on. To begin you're going to chain three. So one, two, three into this very same one I want you to double crochet two more times. So with the chaining of three counting as a double crochet and these two the secret number is three. So you want it to create three to begin. To turn a corner this is gonna create the new corner. You're gonna chain two and in the exact same stitch I want you to put in three more double crochets. So what we've done now is that we've transitioned from being um, the corners of where they were before to creating a new corner which creates a diamond shape for the middle section just like you see. Okay so see these were the corners but this is the new corner coming out here. So now what we're going to do is once you get that done go into the chain two space and single crochet and then create the next corner. Do you see the corners are gonna change on you? So the next corner is going to be created in the middle one of the grouping of three and it's gonna be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet all within that same one. So what I want you to do is complete this all the way around the same fashion. So chain two now and coming back in and creating your corner and I want you to finish up this round and then I want you to do all three of your motifs. So get all three done before moving then on to step number three. Once you get that done just single crochet in the next chain two space and carry on. So remember it's the middle three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet and then you're going to single crochet in the next corner. So I'll meet you at the end of this revolution. And then I'm just going to join it with the slip stitch to the top of the first chain three that I began. So therefore you see it. So originally remember how we had a corner it looked like this. Now it just switched it so now it looks like a diamond and now I want you to fasten off just like I showed you before and get your two others done and then we'll move on to round number three. So let's move on to step number three. This is the same yarn exactly that I used for the swatch. I pulled it out and then I'm restarting. So now that I figured out my swatch in the beginning I can reuse this yarn so it's never a waste. We're going to create a slip knot and in round number three we're going to be changing the corner once again. So we see that it's a corner like this but it's gonna change so that it becomes like this again. So let's begin and number three that we want to start off with to being in a single crochet space or stitch. Okay so it's right in between the two corners. So just go right into a single crochet and we're going to create a corner like we did before. So we're gonna just attach it and then chain three counts as a double crochet and then double crochet two more times because you've already chained your three and that counted as one of them. Then you're going to chain two 
and then in the same one you want to put in three more double crochets. So this is creating a brand new corner which turns the square once again. I haven't done a concept like this in a while um, as far as changing the corner uh, like this. So it was kind of a nice thing to see within the stitch along. So once you get that done in the next chain two space which is the existing corner I want you to put in three single crochets. So one, two and three. Then what I want you to do is that I want you to look towards the next single crochet that you see and then put in another, make that a corner. So it's gonna be three double crochet first okay and then chain two to officially turn and then in the same one three more double crochet. So I want you to continue in the same manner going all the way around Okay, so remember in the next chain two space which is the existing corner you're gonna put in three double crochet or three single crochets. So three singles there and then again start in the single crochet and do your three double crochet chain th two three double crochet and then move on to this and put three single crochets then on here. So please do that all the way around for round number three. So I'm coming all the way back around and I've got my final one that I did here. Don't forget I have to do my th three single crochets. So one, two and three and join to the top of the first chain three. So I want you to fasten that off, weave in your ends and I want you to do the other two and then join me back here and we're gonna do the final two rounds together which is the same color which is the uh, wonderful color and it's the dominant color of your whole blanket. So let's fasten this off and let's start on round number four. So let's begin round number four. I'm using the dominant color and this is burgundy plum and uh, this is a really beautiful color and this is really gonna be striking at the end. So what I want you to do is that we look at our square like this from this point of view. We're now going to change the corner once again. So the corner is gonna appear like this. So it's gonna actually make it look like it's diamond shaped. So let's go in the middle one. You can choose any one of the ones for the single crochet. So it's the middle one of the three. Just go in the, the middle one, just choose one and I want you to fasten on and then chain three counts as a double crochet. So this is a corner. So you're going to um, start off with two double crochets. So with the chain three and the two double crochets that equals three and then chain two because that is your corner and coming into the same one again I want you to put in three double crochets. So one, two, and three. So now what I want you to look at is that I need you to look at a perspective for where the next stitch goes. So you see that this was the existing corner of the last one. I need you to go into the middle one of the group that is before the corner. See it's right there. And I need you to put in three or I need you to put in um, two double crochets first. So one and two and the third one will be a half double crochet because it needs to decrease in size. So just half double crochet that third one in. Okay, so that's half. So it's two doubles and a half. So then what we want to do is single, cro uh, single crochet in the chain two space. And now we're gonna do the opposite to how we got there. So the middle one of the grouping of three is gonna be a half double crochet to start and then two double crochets. Then what you wanna do is that you wanna start your next corner. So the next corner is the middle one of the three single crochets. So you're just gonna do three double crochet. One, two and three and then chain two and then three double crochet back in that same spot. So I'm gonna just take you through one more side just to make sure that you got it. So the three double crochets are done. So now you're going to advance. So you're just gonna look. Here's the next corner of the existing one. You're gonna go in the middle one of the group of, of three and you're gonna start off with two double crochets first. And then the third one that will go in will be a half double crochet so it gets shorter. So it's a half. You're going to single into the chain two space and now you're gonna do the opposite. So you're looking for the middle one of the grouping of three 
and start off with a half double crochet first and then put in two more double crochets after that. And then go to where you see the three single crochets on the existing corner and I want you to go into the middle one and apply another corner in there. So it's three double crochet chain two and three double crochet. So what I want you to do is I don't want you to continue in that same manner going all the way around. So you, you can reverse this video if you want to. Uh, so you're gonna go to the middle one of the grouping of three and put in two double crochet and a half double crochet. You're going to single crochet in the existing chain two space and then come to the middle one and start off with a half double crochet and then two double crochet and then start your next corner in the middle one of the grouping of three single crochets. Please do that all the way around for round number four but do not fasten off at the end of this round. When you come all the way back around I just did my single crochet in this existing chain space in the corner. So I'm coming to the middle one and I'm just doing my half double crochet first and then my two double crochets. And then once you get that done just slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three but do not fasten off. We're going to continue this color one more time and you can see that it's looking out pretty good. So you can see that we've changed from being like that to that to that back to this. So this is what we're going to keep at first square. So round number five we're gonna do a, a layer like this one more time but it's a little bit different and then that's it and then you can uh, uh, do the other squares and then get this done for week number two. So let's continue to round number five. So let's begin round number five. So we're in this stitch where we slip stitch but we need to move ourselves to a corner. So we have to slip stitch a total of three times over. So just go to the next one and slip and go to the next one and slip and finally the chain two space corner and slip. We're now ready to begin. So corners will always be the same. So it's chain three to begin and it's going to be two double crochets. So, so that gives you a total of three like it was before and then corner to turn is chain two and then three double crochet into that same one. So what you have to watch out for this time in round number five which is the final round for this clue is that you have to chain one after each kind of instruction. So once you get that done chain one and then just come into the next gapping of space. So do you see that these are grouped? Come into the next gapping of space and put in three double crochet and then chain one after that. Okay, so I'm finishing it with the chain one. So your next one is going to be in the single crochet that's right in the middle and you're going to apply three double crochets into that one. So one, two and three. And then chain one. So your next one is in between the two groups. Do you see that? It's in between the two groups there and apply three double crochet. And then what are you gonna do right after that? You're going to chain one and then you're going to make another corner. So in the corner that's existing you're going to make a, another corner. So put in three double crochet first chain two and three double crochet to turn. So let's just quickly review another side. I'm just I'm not gonna do it with you on camera but I'll just talk you through it. Okay, so you're going to chain one after you get your grouping of your corner. You're going to go into this space right here. Okay, you're gonna put three double crochet, chain one. Your next one is in the middle one, the single crochet. Three double crochet and then chain one. Then you're gonna come to this gapping space. Three double crochet and then chain one. And then you're gonna do another corner like you have. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. I want you to do that all the way around for this round and this is gonna be the conclusion uh, for this particular clue for this week. So let's get that done. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming all the way back around. Don't forget your chaining ones in between your groups in uh, three. So just slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. Now before you actually go any further what I would highly recommend make sure you do go into a chain not into a gap space. So before you go any further 
I want you to place a stitch marker. So where are you gonna get a stitch marker? Well you can buy one or you can just do what I do. Just use some leftover yarn or you can cut a new piece and I want you to come into the middle one of the group that you have. So you have one, two, three, four and five. Come into the middle stitch of the middle one that you have and I want you to place a stitch marker. So why are we doing that? Really kinda not sure yet. I'm, I haven't looked ahead but I have done this with all my examples so that I have a stitch marker in a place that will be removed and now that that's in place I can just safely get rid of this yarn. We're gonna fasten off completely and then that's it for this clue and uh, we'll see you back next week in order to continue on to week number two. So now that you know how to do the square, you need to make three of those in order to have this all ready to go for week number two. So I guess that's your homework. So until next time, I'll see you next week as we start our next clue, week number two. We'll see you.